1 Corinthians chapter 11. And I'm going to ask us to read it uh, congregationally. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, we're going to, uh, yeah, 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 30. May we, um, may we read. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew forth the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the next few minutes, we want to make sense of this subject. I think I've spoken on it sometime or another in the last almost five decades, but um I'm led to just share on this subject today and need everybody just stay engaged, stay engaged. Amen? Stay just as engaged in the word as we were in that praise. Stay just as engaged. We're talking about pleading the blood of Jesus. Pleading the blood of Jesus. Amen? Pleading the blood of Jesus. Now, uh, for those who um, tend to approach Christianity from a purely academic perspective, I suggest and encourage today that um, you and I face the reality that the whole of Christianity cannot be academically apprehended. If that were so, then everything possible to know about God, I could study it somewhere in some book. But there, there are things that happen in the course of life that hadn't made it to some books yet. And you got to be careful because sometimes people who are supposed to be smart will deem you um, uninformed, perhaps even illiterate or unlearned or shallow, or misguided, or simply in error. All I got to say about folk who make those erroneous conclusions is I know what works when you work the word. Yeah, I, you, you, you might not deem me so intellectually astute. But I know 
that pleading the blood of Jesus works. Many try to relegate uh, pleading the blood to uh, a number of people on the periphery of Christianity who seem to be rather uh, extreme in their views. But pleading the blood, so they argue, well, um, is pleading the blood of Jesus biblical? Amen. I'm glad you asked. When the terminology pleading the blood of Jesus is used, uh, we have to understand that in New Testament theology, the blood of Jesus Christ is the same as saying, I plead the power of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus the Christ. So when we say, I plead the blood, I ain't just using some little term I picked up off the corner. I'm saying, I plead the power and the authority of the blood of Jesus Christ as revealed through his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Are, are we communicating that? So, so you might not understand what I'm saying when I say I plead the blood. But I know what I mean when I say I plead the blood. Yeah, yeah. When I say I plead the blood, I'm saying I believe the whole word. I believe, just like the song, somebody wrote it in a hymn, living he loved me, I believe that. Dying he saved me, I believe that. Buried, he carried my sins far away. I believe that. Rising, he justified and freed me forever. I believe that. And one day, he's coming back. Glorious day, I believe that. So when I say I plead the blood, I'm pleading everything involved. Are we communicating? Yes. Pleading the blood. Means I am claiming, you are claiming, we are claiming the atoning, redeeming power of the blood of Jesus to secure us in all matters. Somebody say all matters. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, we'll get back to that in a little bit. So we plead the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, where did this whole emphasis on the blood, of course, you know, amen, from, 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 from Exodus that the blood offered protection. Amen. Amen. Let me see if I can correct this perhaps sometimes erroneous thought that goes out with pleading the blood. Pleading the blood doesn't mean I'm pleading the blood um, because um, um, I'm fighting um, Satan. It means I'm pleading the blood because I'm claiming the authority of the blood. Oh boy. So, so, so after uh, 450 or so years in, in bondage in Egypt, amen, amen, uh, God told Moses, tell Pharaoh, let my people go, amen, amen, and then Pharaoh hardened his heart, so the ten plagues came, and, and then God told Moses, go tell Pharaoh. I didn't want to get to number 10. But he got hard-headed. And he got hard-hearted. So let him know. Let him know. I'm going to warn him. 
before it happens. Because of his obstinance, I have one more plague that I am sending. Come on, somebody. Yeah. I'm going to release the death angel. And the death angel's going to ride over all of Egypt. And there is one way to escape the effects of the visitation of the death angel. Now, the death angel will take the firstborn of every creature. Your firstborn child, the, the oldest ox, the, <laughs> wherever, the oldest goat, wherever, wherever you got, the firstborn of it. But Moses, I need you to tell Pharaoh and tell my people. But let my people know. That as surely as I release the death angel, I have supplied a way to protect them from the trauma that Egypt will soon experience. What I need them to do is take a lamb without spot or blemish. And if the household too small, then two households get together. But I don't need no broke down lamb. I don't need a lamb been limping all his life. I don't need a lamb that afflicted. Y'all know we didn't say afflicted. We said afflicted. Yeah, yeah. I don't need that kind of. I need a lamb without spot or blemish. And what I need you to do is slaughter the lamb. And when you slaughter the lamb, catch the blood. And then roast the meat. Don't boil the meat. But roast the meat and then eat the meat all that night long. But the blood, I need you to take the blood and smear it over the lintel and the doorpost of your house. And the blood shall be a sign. And when I see the blood. What's happening to everybody else is not going to happen to you. I'm going to pack. It's the term Passover. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I praise God right now. For every time he passed over me, not because I'd done it perfectly, but because he saw the blood, the blood. The blood protected us. Hallelujah. The blood offers protection. Y'all hear what I'm saying? The blood offers protection. Hallelujah. From then on, Israel started observing the Passover. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The blood not only provides protection as, as is evidenced in Exodus 12 and 13, but the, the blood provides healing. Isaiah 53 Amen. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his... Every stripe drew blood. And with the blood he shed, I am... Now, who else other than me needs to, uh, need to catch a hold of that? Hallelujah. So the blood provides protection. The blood provides healing. 
Ephesians 1 7 tells us the blood provides redemption. Hallelujah. I owed a debt I could not pay. Through the blood of Jesus, Jesus paid a debt he did not owe. And he redeemed me. He bought me off of the death block. He passed it. He bought me off the block of permanent separation from God through the blood of Jesus. Are we communicating today? Saints, we got to know when to shout. I shout because I'm redeemed. All that other stuff is real good, but I am redeemed, bought with a price. Oh my God. Then according to Hebrews 10 and 19, the blood allows us to enter the Holy of Holies. Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all know, y'all know, y'all ever heard the term um, sin, sin word by somebody? Well, we, people used to have to send word to God. Through, which means I needed to trust the integrity of the priest that he wasn't going to mess up my word. And then I had to trust the fact that he ain't just had my word. He had all y'all word too. Which means he probably was going to mess up on some of us. But the blood, the blood tore down the veil. Come on, somebody. There was a curtain in the temple that separated the second room from the Holy of Holies. And the Holy of Holies was the holiest place. That's the place where the priest went one time a year. Amen. With blood of the sacrificial lamb. And they would throw the blood on the altar. And I'm told that when they went in, they would tie a rope around the priest. So that if he did anything erroneous and he got struck, they could pull him out. Because nobody else could go in to get him out. And, they, and I'm told that the, the curtain that separated the holy place from the holy of holies went from the ceiling all the way to the floor and that it was three feet thick. But the blood. The Bible says that the blood tore the curtain from the top down. I'm so glad he didn't do it from the bottom up. Because if he did it from the bottom up, some of us would be claiming we did that. Amen. But Jesus started where nobody else could reach. The blood tore the curtain from the top. So we can take our concerns directly to God for ourselves. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Then, hallelujah, uh, the blood cleanses us. Uh, if we confess our sins, 1 John 1, 7 says, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So the blood cleanses us. Hallelujah. So, so, so I need to go to a particular passage now, uh, James 4 and 7. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there really, really quickly. Um, James 4 and 7. It says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Y'all, are, are we communicating? Yeah, so, so, so I work the power of the blood by submitting myself. Amen. Amen. A lot of folk walk around. Amen. They aren't in submission to the Lord. They aren't in submission to anybody. But they, just, they got a church phrase. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. You just need to be quiet. If you are not in submission, you're just wasting your breath. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Are, are we are we communicating? Yeah, he said, he said, yeah, yep, yep. Um, um, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. So pleading the blood of Jesus equals resisting the works of the devil. Uh, are we communicating? Pleading the blood of Jesus equals resisting the works of the devil. Amen. Now, the term pleading the blood is a legal term. It's a court term. It's a term the saints use to argue their case. Lord have mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so when somebody comes trying to be real judgmental and condemning and telling you how no good you are and, and God ain't going to hate you and God ain't going to do this and God ain't going to do that, you plead your case. I, I ain't going to answer your remarks. I'm not going to try to dignify the stuff you said. All I can say is I plead the blood and the blood speaks for me. Y'all hear what I'm saying? The blood speaks for you. can call me unsaved all you want to. I plead the blood. Now, if you, if you got a relationship with God through Jesus Christ and you know anything about the blood, amen, then the spirit ought to know the spirit. Amen. And I don't care whether you don't like the way I talk, the way I walk. You can criticize me all you want. I plead the blood. That's my legal term. I ain't going to get up trying to go tit for tat with you. I ain't going to get up trying to answer every lie you say. That ain't my pl I plead the blood. All the power and authority in the atoning, atoning, redeeming work of the blood of Jesus. I apply it to my case right now. Let the blood speak for me. Somebody said, let the blood speak. You ain't this. You ain't that. Let the blood speak in church acting like you all saved and all of that. You full of stuff. Let the blood speak. Even if you saw me do something wrong, let the blood speak. Even if I got out of character and said what I shouldn't have said, let the blood speak. Because the Lord know when you provoked me and I said that thing, I was like, that wasn't, that wasn't him speaking. I was all in my flesh then. I figured the only way to get you off my back was to cuss you. Now, I don't usually cuss. Before you can tell me I ain't say it, let the blood speak. Now, I know some of y'all, your, your hair curling up real tight now. I do not advocate cussing. I'm not a cussing man. I know too much English to cuss. But I'm saying if somebody, if you get in your flesh and you provoke and provoke and provoke and somebody gets out of character, that doesn't mean they lost their salvation. Let the blood speak. And the blood will tell you gonna tell you but the blood will tell you I remember the day and I remember the hour when so and so came forth and gave their heart to Jesus and received him as their personal savior and accepted the cleansing of the blood of Jesus let the blood Woo! My God, my God. Now, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blood, the blood, the blood. I, I, I feel, I, I can, I, I, I don't see that clearly, but I can see I lost some of y'all's attention. Yeah, yeah, because you really ain't getting into this. Amen. 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 But I'm telling you, you engage in some battles that are not yours to fight. You dealing with some, some 
principalities and powers that are not yours to fight. You're dealing with some wicked, evil, backside people. Their greatest joy is making your life misery, miserable. But that is not your battle to fight. I'm telling you, saints, we got to learn how to say the blood. The blood, the blood, the blood. We're dealing with satanic attacks on our bodies, on our health, on our minds, depression, oppression, all kind of pressure on the mind, in our money, in our relationships, attacks of the devil. And you got to know this battle ain't mine. But what I will do is I'm going to send the blood and let the blood be my defense attorney. Let the blood argue my case. Let the blood speak for me. So, the last part of this sermon is indeed congregational. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm telling you, if Jesus got half the energy from us, half the time, Amen. I know I've been up here for a while. Amen. Yeah, I ain't apologizing. I'm just acknowledging. Because you watch two football games this evening and almost pee yourself up because you don't want to go to the bathroom. So I ain't worried about this. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. <laughs> I bet you heard that. What I need you to do is preach for yourself. Everybody who has who whose family is under attack in any kind of way, just wave your hand one time. Then I need you to get your preaching voice. And I need you to say, in the name of Jesus, I, I see now I plead the blood over my family. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood over my family. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood over my family. Some of the rest of y'all, you going through on your job. You know God put you on the job. God blessed you with the job. But the devil sent a couple imps to try to make you so miserable that you want to walk off of your blessing. Well, the devil is a liar. I need y'all with some job concerns. Amen. To use your preaching voice and say in the name of Jesus I plead the blood over my job in the name of Jesus I plead the blood over my job in the name of Jesus I plead the blood over my job Glory to God. Glory to God. Some of us, our bodies are under attack. Glory to God. One kind of illness after another. Medicine for one thing. Make something else go wrong. Seems like you don't have many good days. And when people ask you how you're doing, you just tell them you're doing all right. Not because you're doing all right. 
You just know they probably ain't going to believe you if you tell them all that's really going on. But when God saves you, he saved your body too. Your body is an instrument for ministry. Glory to God. Get your preaching voice and say in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood over my body. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood over my body. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood over my body. Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody else saying, yeah, he might be attacking me in all the areas, but I got another area. The devil attacks our thoughts. Glory to God. You didn't plan to think with your thought, but the devil feeds stuff to you. The devil gets you listening to the wrong person even the wrong preacher and you get all kind of mixed up stuff in your spirit glory to God then your mind gets all mixed up we are taking authority over that first Timothy 1 7 says God has not given us a spirit of fear but power love and a sound mind come on and help me with your preaching voice in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood over my thoughts. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood over my thoughts. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood over my thoughts. Then some of us, some of us started earning money back when a dollar, a dollar meant something. If you had a dollar, you had something. And so we saved some dollars. But when we saved them dollars, we had no idea that the economy would be so messed up by the time we need them dollars. The devil messing with your finances. The devil messing with your finances. Any takers? The devil messing with your finances. Now let me tell those of you who got two nickels to rub together. You ain't got to raise your hand today. You were broke day before yesterday. So don't come up in here faking it now. The devil just let you have them two nickels so you can miss this point in the message. But the rest of us who being real about it. Hallelujah saying, in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood over my finances. In the name of Jesus. I plead the blood over my finances. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood over my finances. Well, we talked about our families, we talked about our jobs, we talked about our thoughts. Hallelujah. We talked, amen, about illness. We talked about finances. But I need a catch-all. Because maybe your struggle 
goes beyond the scope of that list I just gave. But I, so I need the rest of us who got something in an area I did not call to say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, over every area of my life, I plead the blood in the name of Jesus over every area of my life. I plead the blood in the name of Jesus of every area of my life I plead the blood now come on let's give him a radical plead the blood praise Hallelujah. Families will be restored. Thoughts will be cleaned up. Finances will get straightened out. Relationships will get mended. Hallelujah. Illness got to go. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Call your children's name. Call your spouse name. Call your brothers and sisters name. The blood, the blood, the blood. Why, how are you and I still standing right now? We're not standing because we're so strong. We're standing because of the blood. We'd have been consumed a long time ago. But the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. The devil would have stolen us blind even snuffed out our lives but the blood the blood the blood and the peace we need is right here right now because of the blood the blood the blood yeah I, I feel it tangibly I feel the peace of God coming down like a heavy cloud setting on us today because of the blood, the blood, the blood. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what was out of whack coming back and why? Yeah, pressure that was too high coming on. Yeah, mind that was scattered all over the place coming back. Yeah, the, the, the presence of the Lord brings the peace of the Lord. Y'all hear what I'm saying in here today? Don't you dare let this harvest pass. Don't you dare miss this rain. I plead the blood and it is so it is so it is so it is so because the Lord said it's so it is so it is so I don't care who comes to you saying this ain't real you know it's real you know it's real you know it's real because you know what pleading the blood has done for you and your family up till now. Ah, the blood. That gives me strength. From day to day. It will never lose its power. The blood that gives me strength 
from day to day it will never lose its power wherever you are it reaches it reaches to the heart If you're stranded up there The blood can get you right there And it flows To the Lord If you're one of the lowest places You've ever been in your whole life The blood can reach you right there Oh yeah Oh, that blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never, it'll never lose. Oh, the blood, 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 the blood. Watch out, cancer. Here come the blood. Oh, it reaches to the heart. Watch out, mental illness. Here come the blood. It flows. From day he will never it'll never never lose come what may from day to day the blood will never lose most critical work of the blood is salvation if you are not saved if you have not received Jesus as your personal savior then please come please today was designed with you in mind and nobody makes a spectacle of anybody if you just come and say I want to receive Jesus as my personal savior we will minister to you privately amen Tell you the Bible way to receive him. Take you into the water of baptism. If that's your need and that's your heart's desire. Hallelujah. Then come on. And while you come, I, I implore those who maybe feel like you've wandered away from the Lord. He never gave up on you. You didn't lose your salvation. You just lost some blessings when you walked away. But the same father who was your father before you left is still your father. Come on back home. Come on back to the Lord. If you need to be restored. If you need Jesus, if you need to be restored. Yeah, the blood, the blood, it flows. 
No matter how far the devil knock you down, the blood will get right down there and breathe fresh life into you. Oh, yeah. That blood that gives me strength from day day to day it will never now for all of us who preached the blood to our situation we're going to seal it in this prayer now. Yeah, you might say, well, I ain't, I ain't never done that like that. Well, if you did it in faith today, the blood is still working now. Yeah. I felt a little funny doing that. The blood's still working. Ain't got nothing to do with how funny you feel. Yeah. Yeah. The blood. Ooh. Sealing it in our families, over illnesses, over our finances, over our minds, over our jobs, every other area, every other area. You need to be saved and you need to give come back to the Lord please make haste and come to the altar otherwise now God in the name of Jesus I pray among your people today I know better than they just charged with discharging this word today that will liberate that has liberated that has set your people free today. This word that has brought renewal and refreshing today. This word that has helped us to regain focus today. Thank you for your word. Thank you. For the blood pleading for us. We know it wasn't an even exchange. Jesus shed his blood to save wretches like us. Wasn't an even exchange. But you knew that. And you still sent him for that express purpose so we are grateful today for the blood thank you for how you protect our families over the highways short distances long distances our children when they go to school our grandchildren thank you for how you protect our homes when nobody is there oh all night and all day the blood, the blood, the blood. Thank you, God. God, even if the thief were to come and steal, we pray that the object stolen will be the object that will bring conviction to him. And if that happens, then the blood's still working. We thank you today, God. We don't have time to try to discern who our enemies are. Our enemies are in your hands. Just as our lives are in your hands. So strengthen us now that we may represent you well, not just in worship experiences, but that we may represent you well in the marketplace. We may represent you well when we go shopping. We may represent you well at the gas station. We may represent you well when 
when somebody doesn't get our order right. We may represent you well when somebody doesn't give us the right change. Help us to represent you well, Lord, wherever we go. Thank you. Thank you for the power in pleading the blood of Jesus. Help us to go home now. Walk through the house, pleading the blood, anointing our doorposts, pleading the blood, anointing our vehicles, pleading the blood, even our telephones and televisions and laptops and tablets, pleading the blood. We don't want any intrusions of the any enemy from any portal. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for helping us and healing us. I thank you for the souls yet coming. Those who are coming to rededicate. Those who are coming to receive Jesus as their personal Savior. This is our prayer. In Jesus' sufficiently strong name. Amen. Give God a hand. And those who may need to come, please come. Please come. If you need to be saved, you're not going to worry. You're not worrying us. You're not, you're not, you're, you're an integral part of the reason why we're here today. Hallelujah. And this fellowship, the first Lord's Day of each month, is set aside as our day for Holy Communion. Amen. And uh, when we read that passage from Corinthians, talked about um, um, eating and drinking unworthily. Amen. Um, I try to fellowship people in when they come, but did, I didn't do the right hand of fellowship for you, Brother Arthur. If not, come on. Did I give you the right hand of fellowship? Did I shake, give you the right hand of fellowship when you came? Well, come on, I'll shake it again. But I said that I'm trying to shake people's hands when they come, and that's it. Yeah, I said that a good while ago. Amen. 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 So you good enough in here now. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> God bless you, son. <laughs> Thank God for you receiving Jesus as your personal Savior. Welcome to the body of Christ. Welcome to this branch of Zion called Bethesda. We're here to help you grow the best we can. Yes, Amen. And to help you find out where you belong and the gifts you have in you for the body of Christ. Yes, God bless you. Welcome, son. Thank Amen. You. Let's bless God for Brother Arthur. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So, so just just to be clear now, what I'm trying to do is when people come, welcome them right then. Amen. So that whatever else has to happen happens, but I, I shake the hand right then. Amen. Because I was missing some people, um, and then sometimes people weren't back on the next communion. Because we rotate communions. So, uh, for one reason or another. So, I try to catch them when they come now. Amen. I guess it's time for another mic, huh? This one won't even turn off. I know what that's trying to tell me. I need to preach some more, but not today. <laughs> You ain't got to tell me. I tell myself not today. Amen. Um, the, 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 the first Lord's Day of each month is uh, when we observe Holy Communion congregationally. 
Amen. Now, any, any saint of the Most High God um, is free to observe Holy Communion anytime. If sickness comes upon you and you just feel the need for communion to consecrate that time, believe in God for your healing, or if there's trouble in your home and you want to consecrate, you're free to do that. I'm talking now to give those who are joining us virtually the opportunity to get your uh, elements, the bread and the cup. Amen. Um, it is, is, it's not an empty exercise. When, when the last supper was accomplished, Jesus told them, uh, this, this bread is my body, which is broken for you. And then in Matthew and Luke, he, he told them that uh, this cup is, is, is my blood that is poured out for you. Amen. And I liked, I liked just those words. His blood was poured out for me and for you. So eating and drinking unworthily is not just about whether you or I did something bad or wrong since last communion for which we've not sought the forgiveness of the Lord. Um, eating and drinking unworthily also involves not believing in the power of the blood of Jesus, not believing that his blood is sufficient to redeem me, to atone for my sins, and to protect me and to cover me and to give me access. I've got to believe it all. And if I don't, then I'm eating and drinking unworthily. So we have in this fellowship what's called open communion, which means if you are a Christian, if you receive Jesus, Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you are free to share in Holy Communion with us. Amen. Uh, um, it, is, it is for Christians. It's for believers. So non-believing children and adults, um, this, this wouldn't be for you. This, would, this, is, this has efficacy. It has power and meaning for those of us who have received Jesus. Amen. Is there anyone who needs to be served the bread and the cup? Over here. Anyone else? Anyone else who needs to be served? All right. May we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray your blessing upon this bread, which represents our Lord's body, and upon this cup, which represents our Lord's blood. We thank you, Lord, that at the right time, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. We thank you that when he went to Calvary, he had us on his mind. And he knew every shortcoming, every quirk, every fault, every failure. But he still drank that cup. And he still went to Calvary. Thank you, Lord. A manner of love we did not know. Bless us as we partake of this. It is humbling. It shows us who we are and it helps us get in touch with the magnitude of the love of God. Bless the bread and the cup. Bless those who will partake today here and those who are joining us virtually. In Jesus' strong name, amen. We ask that we take the bread. May we 
eat the bread representing our Lord's broken body. Word of God causes us to know that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. And we believe that solely through the shedding of the blood of Jesus, the sin debt of all humanity was satisfied for all times. All humanity has to do is believe that, and they shall be saved. So we drink the cup representing our Lord's spilt blood. <coughs> Amen. What a blessed privilege to share in Holy Communion.